my, it, it's Dima out here. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on the porch in the shimmering setting sun. Again, boy, am I looking forward to getting my electric guitars back. But we haven't hung out with Mr. Tom Petty in quite some time, so this should be a fun one. All right, so Mary Jane's Last Dance. Um, one source said that it is tuned to the reference pitch of 453 hertz. Here's how you do that if you're the kind of person who wants to go through all this trouble. If you're using my app, not, you know, not mine, I didn't make it. The app I use, which is D apostrophe tools by Diodario, you will see the settings little button up in the corner there. I'm going to push that here. And then you, there's one option that says reference 440 hertz. You may click in there and then you will see a bunch of options. It doesn't have 453. But it does have 452, which I recall is old Philharmonic. I recall that from the um, the one acoustic number one. I think that we figured out that was to 452. So that would be darn close. So you switch your app over to that, and then you tune your guitar as regular. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to assume that probably one out of one out of 50 people are going to bother to do that. But if you want to play with the song, you might want to do that. Otherwise, you'll be 13 hertz off pitch. Anyhow, here we go. A minor. This is another Tom. Every single Tom Petty song is a is a, a piece of brilliance. But this is yet another one that just uses three or four chords, and it's the best thing ever. So here we go. A minor, and our strumming pattern is going to be down, 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 up. Switch it to G if you want to be just like Mr. Petty. Use your pinky finger on the E string third fret, middle finger on the A string second fret ring finger on the E string third fret. That's a G too. It's just got an open B. You could also do that this way. You could play regular G if you want to. Play whatever G you want. I was just having a lot of fun watching some live videos of this and he's clearly playing. And then G. But instead of down, 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 up, we're going to go, we're going to add one up in between the first two downs and go down, up, down, 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 up. Then we're going to switch to D and do the a minor strumming pattern, down, 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 up, and then back to A minor, which is the fourth chord, and it gets the G strumming pattern, down, up, down, 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 up. Great, let's add some fanciness to that, if you like. For the first A minor, this is fun, you're going to strum it with nothing on, so this is sort of like an implied G, but it gives the effect of... And that's fun to do. If you're new to these hammer-on situations, right, I strum and then I put my chord down. It's like a hammer-on times three. If that's a problem for you, start with doing your A minor and just hammer on the pointer finger. It will give roughly the same effect. And you'll notice that it happens, the hammer-on happens, in between the first two downs. So I'm going to call out the right hand and just do the left hand. Down, 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 up. Down, 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 up to G. Down, up, down, 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 up. D, we're going to do the same rhythm with a hammer on we did with the first A minor, but we're going to hammer it on from D sus 2, which is middle finger off. And then A minor, the fourth chord, not the first chord. Now I'm going to attempt to show you how the muting goes if you want to get extra, extra fancy. So I'm going to do it slow and watch when I mute. This is more about the right hand. So let me get nice and cozy here, sort of at a good angle. Here we go. speed. And that's it. That's for the verse. The only other thing that there's a little variation on is sometimes he goes and that's adding your pinky finger to the third fret of the baby E string. That makes it an A minor 7 because A minor's 7th from its scale 
the A minor scale is just so convenient because it has no sharps or flats. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is, the seventh. Here's another G. So if you add, so sometimes he goes. great because you, you're going to put your pinky there if you're doing it the Tom Petty way. If you're not, that's okay too. It doesn't matter. But that's it. That's the verse. That's half the song. Wow, that's easy. If you don't want to do the muting, that's okay. Just do the strumming pattern. The thing about strumming and switching chords, it's okay to have your hands switching while you're strumming and there's like a, a nothing sort of just uh, a nothing note that happens so you stop before the G and before the A minor that's okay too you don't have to switch in no time at all it's physically impossible to switch in zero time so don't worry about if you're doing this that's okay you can only work on one thing at a time. Work on your switching or your strumming. You can't work on both. So if you're switching while you're strumming, that's okay. Or maybe you're gonna work on your uh, your strumming. So you're gonna and then you're gonna switch and take your time. We're all at different places in our journey. Anything's great. Nobody's watching. I'm watching. I'm always watching. Anyways, the chorus E minor. I stands for Mary Jane. Major. That's weird because the A of the song is minor. Gosh, I'm in the setting sun and I'm getting sweaty. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna towel off. I'll be right back. Whatever. I'm gonna suffer through it. You guys can't smell me. Doesn't matter. All right, so, oh, I was thinking about the strumming. You can practice your strumming with no chord at all, right? Or just one chord. So not to beat this horse to death after it's already dead, but, uh, you know, just hold one chord and go. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. Get the right hand down, and then work on the left hand. Or work on the left hand, and then work on the right hand. Whatever you like. Or if you're left-handed, vice versa, everything. Great. Chorus, E minor. Big dramatic strum, you can strum away. If we're at a campfire, or you're in a band, the situation might change. And then A major. E minor, this is the second half. That's how he enters back into his A minor via the G because otherwise he would have gone A and then back into the verse, which kind of would have worked, like that would have been fine. But he chose to go to the G. So that's it for the chorus E minor, E minor, A, A. E minor, E minor, A, G. But here's that really fancy thing that happens that you might be interested in doing, and there's a neat little lesson in here. So if we're in our chorus. string on the fret that it's on already, the second fret, and slide up to the sixth fret, and then place your pointer finger on E and B5. This is another A chord. He's just going to walk up the A's, and here is the first stop on the walk. This looks like a little F, right? If you move your F from the, your baby F, from the first fret, from the first, second, and third frets, to the fifth, sixth, and seventh frets, you have a higher pitched A. Uh, so we went, and we just did that much of it, and then, instead of your middle finger, put your pointer finger on and go from six to nine, and then make a D shape. That is another A chord. This is A, this is A, and so is this. They're just different shapes. We're walking up the A triads, basically. The root note of your D shape is the B string. Another way of saying that is the A. The D in your D chord is the B string. That is the root note. So a good way to check your work here is the 12th fret, of course, is the octave spot. So this is where the B string becomes B again. 
and if we move it down one, it's B flat, and if we move it down one more, it's A. So there is our root A in our D-shaped A, and then one more higher than this, use your ring finger on G9 up to 14, and then pinky goes on B14, and baby E gets 12 with your pointer finger. And that's your high A, one octave higher than that. So that all was G2 to 6. Little F. 6 to 9. D. Shape, right? 9 to 14. If you wanted to skip the slides, you could go like this. second time, he doesn't have as much time because we just spend four beats on A, three, four, G. So what he does is he speeds it up this thusly. Six, seven, eight, A. And then of course, two frets lower than A. That was really sloppy, I know that. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to drip here. This is kind of comical, so I'm gonna let it keep happening. Um, two frets lower than our A, our D-shaped A, is G. In fact, anywhere you put this D-shape is something, but A is one whole step or two frets higher than G. You could think of it this way. Here's our root six bar chord A on the fifth fret of the E string, and there's G. So if, you know, this over this equals this over X. Because everything's in proportion in my head. And then the Seeker's head too, yeah, but so a little less sloppy. There it was. Yeah. And that's it. We gotta do the solo. Any takers on the solo, that'll be uh, hugely top of the list as soon as I get my electrics back. But uh, those are the two parts of this song. And that's it, because it's great. It's a simple yet ingenious Tom Petty classic. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all your lovely requests. Thank you for, uh, welcome all the new people. There's, there's always so many new people who might not know the situation, but the situation is I'm on the uh, deck of the temporary housing because we moved and my electric guitars, they're in the moving truck. But I'm gonna get them back on this weekend, so I'm really excited and uh, I'm excited for all the stuff we're gonna do. It's gonna be amazing. Thank you for being here. You're the best, we're the best. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.